right. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Life Lessons Live with the crew. <laughs> we are in for an amazing time on today. I'm so excited. I've been waiting on this all day long. I pray you have too. Uh, we have a special guest with us, a great, great friend of mine, Bishop Pastor Calvin Ramsey. Hey, man, we're going to be talking about this new book today. You need to share with your friends right now, your family members, your auntie, them, cousin, them, all your names, your friends, your neighbors, all of that, because this work is, is life changing. And uh, we appreciate you. You know that here we're not in no judgment zone. We're not being critical. None of those types of things. We're here just to have a conversation. We want to talk. Uh, you can join in the conversation with us by commenting in the comment section on Facebook. Uh, also know that you can view this on YouTube if you'd like to. Just go to Life Lessons Live or Gerald Patterson and uh, you'll find us out there. We're also streaming on Periscope. So whatever uh, 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 a medium that you're on, you, you can pick this up and it will be recorded so you can go back and watch it again and again and again. Or if your family member, friend, cousin, them, auntie, them missed the show, you can tell them to go out on YouTube and pick this up. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So we're going to have a great time. I would like for uh, our guests, our co host to, to introduce themselves with us today. Uh, we all introduce yourself, let them know who you are, and Bishop Calvin will let you uh, speak last. Come on, Charlotte. Hi, I'm Charlotte Polk right here in Tupelo, Mississippi. I'm a youth advisor, preschool teacher, and I love the little people. <laughs> That's her tag, y'all. I love the little people. Come on. Amen. Hey, guys, I'm Stephanie Monique right here in Tupelo, Mississippi as well. Educator and mentor and adult educator for Life Christian University, um, all around worshiper and server and just daughter of God. And I am excited because I love to learn. So conversations birth new seasons. That's our motto. And so we're going to get into it today. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and listen again, uh, Bishop Calvin Ramsey. Let them know who you are, man. We yes, about sir. To talk. I'm excited, man. I, I'm ready to just jump on in here. But well, I, on, I'm excited, excited too. I am really excited about this. Yeah. Hello, everybody in social media land. I'm Bishop Kelvin Ramsey. Uh, I'm the pastor of the Spirit of Excellence Church. We're located in Oxford, Mississippi. In fact, this is my 20th year anniversary mm -hmm. coming up of, of pastoring the Spirit of Excellence. God has been certainly good to us and uh I, I am certainly excited bishop to be on with you i think this is one of the the best shows on on on, fa on uh, facebook on social media because you have you have really stirred up the consciousness of people through conversation and i, I appreciate you letting me come on with you uh, the, the doctor himself <laughs> <laughs> oh man it's such an honor to have you with us man i'm so excited and listen i was with bishop calvin on friday night i believe on his show Amen. Came the perspective, and man, we had a conversation. And y'all got to go go back on this on this uh, Facebook page. Yeah, this conversation up, man. It was absolutely amazing, and uh, I'm just excited about where God has us right now and the opportunities that we have, and uh, just the timeless pieces as are coming forth. And uh, again, uh, on today's show, we're going to be talking about Bishop Ramsey's new book called Figuring Life Out, Figuring Life Out, amen. And it was some time in the making and uh, and everything. And he, he would drop a few things with me and he'd talk about a few things he was working on as the work was going forth and coming out. And so uh, if you have it, if you don't have it, we're going to give you an address and all those types of things for you to be able to get it. Uh, it's hot off the press. You can get it. It won't take you long to get it. They are ready to go. I have my signed copy. Yes, sir. My signed copy. And I want to let you know the day that I received, well, no, it was the next day. I received it on a Friday. This was my Saturday morning uh, uh, time of, of worship and study. I picked the book up. I read it from the cover to the back page in the same day, the same setting. It was intriguing. It was it was interesting. It grabbed my attention. It was heartfelt. Uh, it was real to me. I could I could relate to it. Been there, done that. I could witness to what Bishop was talking about, what he was teaching, what he was sharing. I say yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I was anticipating the next chapter, anticipating the next page. So I just want to encourage you. Uh, we're going to give you several opportunities to to be able to get this book. But Bishop uh, Calvin, talk to us about 
figuring life out? Why why did this how did this come about? Well, it that's that's interesting because uh actually it came about when my wife was going to college. Mm. Uh she had picked up her time back to go to college and and when she went, uh I, I never forget this. She came home one day and she walked in the room, she said, Man, this math is really tearing me up, she said. And she simply said, I just can't figure it out. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, and when she said that, a light bulb went off in my brain. And, and the Lord spoke to me and said, Kelvin, that's the problem with people today. Mm. Uh, in the church, in the world, people just can't figure life out. They mm. Keep going through life in circles and, and 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 keep going through these things, repeat offenders of, of, of the of the same things. And he, he said, Kelvin, I need you to write a book to help people to figure life out. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Just 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 hearing, as you said, your wife was going through life. Yeah. She never gave me through life. And she made a statement and it reached down and it grabbed your spirit. Man. And now we have this great work. Man. That's powerful right there. Yeah. And let, let, let me add this also because I, I, I once I got into the book, I, I ended up, I called my nephew who's who is a math teacher. Okay. And so we, we had some conversations about math. I said, uh, and his name is Danny. And I said, Danny, I said, um, what is it? What's so special about formulas? Mm. So I, and and he and I said, and he said, Formulas help you figure the problem out quicker if you mm. can understand and master the formula. Okay. And, and what he told me is that if you get a formula M equal, you know, whatever C squared, whatever the formula is. Okay. <laughs> and all these other formulas, you know, you, you could probably figure it out by trying. I, I did this myself, putting certain numbers, you know, in, mm -hmm. in where the X is at, putting certain numbers where the C is at and seeing. But then that take you so long. OK, you kind of keep plugging in this and plugging in that and it ain't working. And uh, he said, when you get the formula, you get the answer quicker. OK. And okay. so and so that's that's what it is about life. People trying to plug in things in their life to make it work. But God has a formula that'll mm -hmm. make your life work right away. <laughs> Come on. That's excellent. Mm -hmm. That is excellent. Uh, you know, I, I noticed in the book, um, you know, you, you had. You have your acknowledgments, of course, and yes. family, and, and yes. I just want to say that this this young man, he's not a novice. Uh, he he's a family man. Him and his wife been married for thirty two years. Thirty two years. Um, on his shirt right now that he's wearing, he's got best dad on it, mm -hmm. and he didn't buy it for himself. <laughs> his children bought that for him, and uh, so I just want you to know that he's loved everywhere that I know. Uh, everywhere that I go, I mentioned his name. Thank you, Bishop. A friend and uh, people, people just love Bishop Calvin Ramsey. And Thank I want you to know he he ain't caught on the bishop things. He's just Calvin, uh, but he's a pastor. He loves people. Uh, he's very passionate about what he's doing. I've known him for over over twenty some odd years, and uh, he's always been the same. Uh, yeah, his his wife, his family, his children, uh, amazing. Um, so. In this, you acknowledged everyone, and then I'm looking at the table of contents, Bishop, right now. All right. And I want to share some of the titles to the chapters. Um, the first chapter says, what is life? And, and we're going to talk about, let you talk about that. And, okay. And Charlotte and Stephanie, you guys have some questions. I want you to go with Charlotte. Uh, uh, y'all jump in here, and then uh, y'all out there listening, if you got some questions, Stephanie, okay. put it out there. Put it in the comment section. We are live. Mm -hmm. We are seeing what you're doing. We'll answer you. You'll be out there for, for Bishop to respond. Chapter two talks about how events affect your life. How events affect your life. Yes. The third, third chapter deals with the master key to figuring life out. The master key to figuring life out. The fourth chapter is the GPS of life. Ah, the GPS of life. <laughs> Chapter five. See, this is already interesting, you guys. You, you got to get this. You got to get this. The fifth chapter is living the life God intended. Chapter six is answering the call of God on your life. 
chapter seven, how to handle the unexpected in your life. How to handle the unexpected in your life. And chapter eight, what happens if you don't figure life out. Mm. And then chapter nine, the choice is yours. <laughs> the choice mm. is yours. So y'all see the lineup. Y'all see the lineup. So Bishop, talk to us about chapter one. What is life? What is life? Uh, uh, I started that when the, when the Lord first gave me that, that that question. Of course, everybody's trying to figure out uh, the real meaning of life. And, and, and what the Lord really began to talk to me about was all these life statements that that people make. You know, life is this life is life is that life is this. And, and I got some in the book, of course, and uh -huh. uh, 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 right in the first chapter, right at the beginning, I'm saying that people are saying life is this and life is that. OK. Mm -hmm. Then the one I said that probably is the most dangerous is life is what you make it. Mm -hmm. That may be the most dangerous statement uh, of all the life is questions, because we all know all of us on this show know that we tried to make life and made a mess of it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, how, how many mistakes did we uh, make trying to make our life? Mm -hmm. And uh, certainly uh, the whole premise of that chapter is life is not what you make it. Life is what God makes it because he's the one that gave you life. Mm -hmm. Okay. So so that's that's the foundation of, of, of the whole chapter of, of, of what is life. All right. You guys have anything on that? What is life? Come on, Stephanie. I was just going to say, um, you know, when when you said, you know, life is what you make it. Um, I remember trying to make my life. Uh, you know, trying to fit my plans and then ask God to bless what it is that I came up with. Mm. And, uh, and it almost killed me. Like I was suicidal. I was depressed, um, you know, and just dealing with a lot of things emotionally. And that comes later in the chapter two in, 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 in some chapters. But like you're right, life is not what you make it. But we're taught that at an early age. You know, um, go out and you can be anything you want to be, you know, dream big. And we yet forget to teach our, our youth and children that, you know, seek God and see what God has for you. You know, seek his plans. It wasn't later. It wasn't until later in life that I came into the knowledge of, oh, wait a minute. I should have went to the source first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> into, to you know, say, hey, God, well, what do you think about this? You know, I want to do this. You know, is, is this okay? You know, and, and really have a, a conversation with God so that you can begin to start on the right path. So many of us have started on the wrong paths and then we train wreck and then we're trying to get it together. And, and we refer to that sometimes as midlife crisis, but you know. <laughs> right. Uh, I think that that's good, you know, to to start at the source and and teach children that instill that in them. You know, one of my favorite verses is Jeremiah twenty nine and eleven. You know, understanding the thoughts and the plans that God has for you. So I just I think that that's good. That's good. That's, that's, that's good. Actually. One thing is, I was praying this afternoon and just kind of pr uh, preparing for for our, our, our conversation on on this afternoon was that the Holy Spirit just dropped to me that many people are taking life like it's a competition mm -hmm. and that is causing people a lot of challenges trying to measure up um you know what what what's most popular yeah and, and what do i need to do to fit in and all these different types of things and it has people in into mass chaos and and this is what bishop ramsey is addressing in this book anything else on, on what 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 is life well, well, the, the the quicker you find out about it, uh, the better it is. And, uh, you know, Sister Charlotte, I'm sure you can talk about that with, with the children. That's where it's got to start. Amen. You know, you got to start putting uh, life principles in the children, mm -hmm. because I'm going to be honest. <laughs> when we when we grew up, mom and them wasn't talking about life too much. I'm just going to be honest. That's right. They weren't, they weren't sharing some things that needed to be shared. And I love them. They were great examples of God. Mm -hmm. But we really had to figure out some things on our own. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, that's what got us in a lot of trouble. But uh, Sister Charlotte, I, I know you can talk about because that's probably what you do with those young people is trying to give them that foundation about life. Definitely training up the child in, in which they should go. And then 
trying to make sure that they identify with God, who they are. They are not their own. And we have to make sure that they know that at an early age. I keep saying it, but it's important. They get the concept. And then sometimes you have to just break it down to them. You do have a father, but you have a heavenly father also that is watching you. Remember that? Uh, be careful, little feet, what you hear, what you see. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. We teach, we used to, and we still do at church, teach them that because they need to know that they should be conscious to know that somebody is watching them. Okay. They have a, bigger, a bigger expectation of them also. Brenda Gibson Greer says, it's like the clay trying to go on its own without the potter. The results is just a mess without the potter. <laughs> so true. So, so true. In fact, there's a scripture that goes along with that in Jeremiah uh, 10 and 23 said that it is not in man that, that walker to direct his own steps. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, that goes perfectly with, with that statement. We try to make our own life and we end up making a mess and, and not really understanding, Bishop, the whole premise of life. Just watch this. Jesus said, I've come to give you life, uh -huh. he said, which means that you can be living and not have life. Yeah. Oh, my God. You yeah. can be living and not have life because Jesus said, I came that yeah. you could have life. Yeah. Then he said, you might have it more abundantly. But I'll ask you this question, Bishop. You can answer it. How can you have a life, a abundant life without having life abundant things? Oh, it's impossible. <laughs> it's impossible. You, yeah. you can try to create it. You can try to make, you know, life is what you make it. And, and you get into that competition and trying, you'll even be competing with your own self, you know, competing against yourself and, and certainly against others. Right. And, uh, that's not life is not a competition. No, you know, life is not a competition. And the world has has set us into that mold and it's caused a lot of things, greed and immorality and unethical mm -hmm. behaviors and, and evil and wickedness. And and uh, people are, are doing all manner of evil toward one another because they are fear that someone is competing against them. Wow. And that's, that's 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 wickedness. That's wickedness. And it we're is. going against what God intended for us, uh, how he intended, he, uh, going against how God intended for us to live. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. That's good, Bishop. And the last thing I'll say on this chapter is uh, uh, the Bible says in Galatians 2 and 20, Paul said, I've been crucified with Christ, yet I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the statement that I love in that whole verse is this, the life I now live. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so once you get to know God, you got to come into the life you now live mm. as opposed to the life you used to live. Mm. And there's got to be a difference in that life because that's what God does. He comes in your life to make a difference, a positive difference that you will never forget about. Absolutely. You got to figure that out. Yes. And, and, and when we look at the scriptures in John 10 and 10, when he says the enemy comes but for to steal, kill and destroy. But I am come that you would have life. That word life. Is, is rendered Zoe life, the life right. that God intended for us to live. Exactly. Not life as we know it. You just entered into newness of life. And it's the life now, as you said, to make a difference in us that we can live how God intended for us to live. That's it's awesome. empowering. It's empowering. It is. It's deliverance. It is wholeness. It is healing. Oh, this newness of life that comes upon us. We're new creatures. Old things are passed away and all things <laughs> become yeah. new. When you just talk about this, Bishop Ramsey, it, it causes great joy to come really up the heart. Those yeah. that have experienced this newness of life. Amen. Amen. Oh, my, God. my God. I see Stephanie Hand go up. She <laughs> on that, Bishop. Come on, yeah, yeah. I, just, I want to get to chapter two on this. Okay, just really quickly. I, one of the, the statements that you made, Bishop Ramsey, in the book, which I find so um, exhilarating, you say you can belong to the right church with the right doctrine and still be very confused about life. This is why this book is so important. It doesn't just deal with the relate. It doesn't just deal with those who who do not have a relationship. But it also helps with those who are having a hard time trying to make sense out of life. So it's about making sure that we understand not to just seek the will of God, but to seek God actually Himself. And yeah. so. I thought that was really good because sometimes we're so busy trying to be productive or trying to be busy 
about doing things or doing life to where we negate the relationship with God himself. We do. So, we do. Yeah. And I said, I think I said in that chapter, if I'm not mistaken, about how people go to church. And there are, more, there are just as many people jacked up in church <laughs> as it is in the world. Uh -oh, because, <laughs> <laughs> and the reason being is because they think the answer is in the church. When it's oh, actually yeah. not in the church, it's in the God of the church. It's in relationship oh, it's with Jesus Christ. So you oh, go to my. church and don't have to get in a relationship, you, you're wasting your time. Oh, so, my. Oh, oh, my. I knew Listen. you was going to bring it on home. <laughs> I'm going to bring it home. Listen, Pastor Samantha Webster says this. Oftentimes, we try to build our lives without the carpenter, Jesus, mm. and without the blueprint, the word of God. Wow. Amen. That's good. Amen. That Praise is good. <laughs> That's good. All right, guys, let's hit chapter two. Let's hit chapter okay. two. How events affect your life. How events affect your life. Talk to us a little bit about that, Bishop. Bishop, this to me, this is probably maybe the most important chapter in, in the book to me. Okay. Uh, when I begin to write how events affect your life, it's oftentimes those events that we people bury people don't want to talk about. And I get real in this chapter because mm -hmm. what, what, I, what I actually did was have, have my wife to write five uh, stories, <coughs> excuse me, uh, fictional stories about people, mm -hmm. some molested, some uh, in different situations and, and, and how that happens in real life, that when those events happen, Bishop, if it's not dealt with, mm -hmm. this controls their life for so many years. Yeah, because because they won't deal with that issue or that event. And if you're not careful, you can live your whole life in an event in a time frame and mm -hmm. never get delivered from it. And your life is just miserable because of a certain event that happened. Wow. So you can actually get stuck in a time capsule in a time capsule. Yes. Just stuck there. Stuck, stuck in what happened, stuck in the event, stuck uh, with unforgiveness for years, and you're miserable because you won't deal with the event. L let me share this with you. I, I preached one time at a church at a revival, and at the end of that message, I said, I need everybody who, who ever had an event happen to you, molestation, rape, whatever, and you've never dealt with it to come forward so I can pray for God to free you. To my surprise, there was a lady who came up. She was, she was an older lady, a very mm -hmm. older lady. In fact, she was 91 years old. 91. 91. And when she came up, tears was running down her face. And when she came to me, she said, I've held this in for 50 something years. Wow. That I was raped by one of the people, one of the other people, you know, other people. And I never dealt with it. Wow. And it was it was at that altar that she cried and released it. All those years of pent up uh, anger and frustration and, and nobody dealt with it, Bishop, mm -hmm. until that night. And she left out of there free, 91 years old. 91. That's, how, that's how the events can affect your life. Yes. Wow. wow. What a powerful testimony. So what um, you're saying in that, Bishop, is never too late. Never too late. It's never too late. Because I know there's probably someone listening and they may be, I'm 58 years old. Uh, there may be someone on here that's in their 60s and their 70s. You just heard the testimony, a woman who was 91 years old. Nice. Don't y'all think for a moment they're not 90-year-old people that are on social media because they are. <laughs> okay. And they may hear this. And I just want to encourage, I don't it's never too late. It's never too late. And um, you know, uh uh Bishop, just you want to get free. There are people that are that that are experiencing sickness and disease because they're harboring bitterness and anger because they hadn't forgiven someone. There's someone that's praying unto God, asking the Lord to heal, asking the Lord to to take this 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 uh, uh, this pain out of their life. But yet they they haven't forgiven or they haven't addressed that event. That, that unresolved issue that's going on in their life. And the root of bitterness is, is something you do not want to, to deal with. And sometimes it's tied up in an event that you never addressed, you never dealt with. 
And this is what Bishop is talking about in this book. Yeah, yeah, that, that second chapter. And I want to say this too uh, for church people. And I need y'all to hear me. And I'm, I'm really talking to, to church people more than I'm talking to saints. And that is, we often judge people by what they do. Come on. But we don't take time to find out their story. Come on. And, and, and I, I deal with this in the book uh, very exclusively about mm -hmm. how we judge people. Well, OK, we want to talk about the homosexual. Why is he a homosexual? Come on. You know, the lesbian. Why are they a, a lesbian? They, they didn't mm -hmm. think they go come up and be a homosexual lesbian. We can't judge them because we don't know their story. All of us got a story. Yeah. Every one of us got a story and, 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 and stop judging people by what they do. Mm -hmm. They are not what they do. That's not who they are. That's just what they do. And if we can ever get to the bottom line story as mm -hmm. of the why they act like that, then we can get somewhere. It'll cause it to raise our ability to be more <laughs> effective with this ministry of reconciliation that's yes. been given to us. Uh, Stephen Covey, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, the first habit is seek to understand before wanting to be understood. Wow. People said, Bishop, judge not. Don't judge. Get to want to know this person. Um, uh, like you say, hear their story. And we talked about difficult conversations. Uh, we got to learn how to not be offended with Ooh. things. Ooh. You know, some things you're offended at it when you don't understand how these things came about. Um, and listen at this. They may be better than they were last year, but come you're on. just meeting them in this place and you're trying to judge them where they are and they've yeah. come a long way. Yes, yes. Yeah. Here's one of my favorite sayings. Uh, if we could all be honest with each other and, and, and understand that there are some things we need to share, uh, the question is, who can handle shock treatment? Oh, my. Who can handle shock treatment and not judge me? If if I need to tell somebody that I I you know I have a, a problem with pornography, mm -hmm. I don't need no sanctified Holy Ghost filled saints. You, well, you on your way to hell? Then what? what was the problem? You, I thought you were saved. No, no, and that's why a lot of people hold back because that's true. Who can handle shock treatment? I may tell you something that I'm dealing with. Don't mean I'm not saved. Yeah. But that's when I need the real saints to help me to get through it. But we don't do that because we can't trust people with, this, with those things. But that that's also, Bishop, and, and this is the work that we've got to do. This is why we're having these conversations. we got to have conversations about this and what do we need to do to correct it. We've got to mature. Uh, we, we've got to grow up. Uh, we've got to know that the same grace that, that keeps me from lying is the same grace that will keep a person from pornography. It's the same grace to keep a person from, from homosexuality. It's the yes. same grace. Yes. You know? And sometimes that person don't understand that and they're caught in guilt. They're caught in, in, in sometimes they hadn't been given their own self and that's why they can't get, get, get the release. So there are a number of things. And so we got to talk about this and we got to create what we call hot environments. Yes. Where we can be honest, open and transparent and feel safe. That's one that I think is one of the biggest hindrances to people getting assistance with figuring life out is that there's not enough safe places. Mm. Mm. Right. Come on, Bishop. That's good. You know, even for these young people, these teenagers, right. right? You know, these teenagers that need to. I've gotten myself over into something, Charlotte, and and, and I don't know what I've gotten my over myself into, and they're trying to figure it out their own self or taking counsel from their peers. Right. And they don't have mercy. The blind leading the blind. They're gonna all fall in the ditch. Wow. But if, they, if they try to go to someone that may have some wisdom, if they're gonna be judged about it. They, they're going to try to figure it out on their own. Yep, that's very true. And, and, and there's no hurt like a church hurt. There, oh. there, there's no wound like a church wound. You know, yeah. you come to church to get healed. And hey, instead hey. of getting healed, you get judged. Right. You know? yeah. and, and the thing is, we get judged by a whole lot of things, not just whether you're homosexual or lesbian. Uh, you're light skinned, Stephanie. I'm dark skinned, Bishop. Y'all, 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 you got short hair, you got long, all these things, you know, and, 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 and we missed out the main thing. Is that we all made in the image of God. 
Amen. Yeah. And, and can be delivered, but you got to deal with those events. We got to figure life out, Bishop. We got to figure it out, Bishop. <laughs> we got to figure it out. Stephanie had something to say. Yes, I, I just want to make mention of this because you talked about, you know, getting to the story and we talked about some root causes of things. There is a course that we teach in um, LCU, like Christian University, and it's called Temperament Theory. Um, and there's a book that goes through that course, Why I Act the Way That I Do. And so some things that we're judging or looking upon on the outward surface, you know, has to do with temperament and has to do with inborn, innate, you know, things that God has put in us, you know, such as you being cleric or, you know, sanguine, melancholy or phlegmatic. And so um, I think getting an understanding of, you know, who people are and being able to see people the way God sees them um, and not make presumptions based upon things that they do um, outwardly. Uh, we also have different personalities. Those are shaped by, you know, things that you've been through, those events, you know, um, if you were rejected as a child or if you didn't grow up with a father or if you were molested, you may tend to have some um, protective, you know, mechanisms that you, you know, shoot forth. And so some right. people, well, she just mean, and, you know, she's not nice. And so just different things like that. So there comes some teaching that, that needs to come along with that, some educating as far as who people are and, and understanding the way God has designed us to be. Yeah, yeah. And, and can I say this last thing, Bishop, on this? I know we yes. got to move on. But uh, the, the whole premise of this book, this chapter was from Ecclesiastes 9, where mm -hmm. Solomon said that the same event happens to us all. Oh, wow. Right? And so what Solomon was saying that saved people lose their job, unsaved people lose their job. Mm -hmm. uh, saved people lose their child, like I did. Unsaved people lose their child. Uh, 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 that the same event happens to us all. But the question is, how are you going to handle those events? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's where that chapter really stemmed from. How are you going to handle those events? And I'm telling you, without God, I don't know how you can handle these kind of events. Powerful. I don't. Powerful, powerful, powerful. Thank you all. Listen, share it with a family member or friend. We're still listening. Thank you for those of you that's been commenting. Uh, we want to go into chapter three and talk about chapter three. And chapter three says the master key to figuring life out. Yes. The master key. Talk to us about that, Bishop. Yes, the master key. And, 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 and I, I purposely held off on that in the beginning of the book. And, and let me say this too, right before I move on to the master key, okay. is that one thing I really, and I'm not, I don't boast about my book, but the one thing I really like about my book is that it is both practical and spiritual. Yes, sir. So, you know, I, I, I put in the real elements of life and then I've tried to uh, uh, back them up with scripture because mm -hmm. we live in a real world and we got to know how to live in this world. Yes. And, and so now when I get to the master key of life, of course, my thought is, is a master key. You know, what does a master key do? <laughs> okay. it, it can open any door. It can open any room, you know. And uh, I use the analogy of you may go into a hotel and they give you a key. Okay. But, but your key can only unlock your room. Mm -hmm. But if you become manager of that hotel, they will give you a master key so that then you only get the master key through relationship with the owner. Okay, come so, on. And so if you want the, the master key of life, then you have to have a relationship with the one who made you. Oh. And, and then he gives you the master key to all er, every area of your life. That, that's a powerful chapter, man. It, it is. is. It is. One of one of the, the paragraphs you have is who is God? Mm -hmm. Who know? is God? Who is God? Yeah. And, and, and how, how many have messed up on that? Just that question. Oh, my. Who is God? What is God? Uh, mm -hmm. And so you got different theories coming from all kinds of churches. God is this. God is that. Mm -hmm. The only book that tells you about God. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> and you know what too vision until you know god you don't know yourself no, you don't oh, wow. you don't You're created in his image and his likeness that's right that's right and and so i often say bishop that we are made like god uh yeah. in that we are spirits like god is but uh god is more than the spirit he's a speaking spirit 
And, and so we become like God when we speak. That's how we're like God. And and and, and, and the Bible says in Hebrew three that uh, we understand by faith about that he uh, framed the worlds with the spoken word. He's mm -hmm. framed his world. Mm -hmm. and, and how many know we frame our world yes. with our spoken words. We we yes. we frame the atmosphere we live in by what we say. If you say, I, I ain't gonna never make it. If you say, I'll pour me, you are forming your atmosphere. Yeah, I yeah. refuse to do it. I'm like God, I say I shall live and not die. Come on somebody, <laughs> form your own uh, 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 atmosphere. Don't let nobody think it for you. And God will help you to do that, Bishop. And, and in, in, in this chapter on page 33 in the book, you, you reference Genesis 1 26 that says that God created us in his image and in his likeness. After he formed man out of the dust of the ground, he breathed into man the breath of life and man became a living soul. Right. Genesis 2, 7. Since this is found fundamental and foundational to life itself, it must be established and believed before anyone can even begin to figure life out. No. Nope. No doubt about it. If you, if you, and Sister Charlotte said it earlier, but when you're dealing with the kids, you're dealing with fun, the foundational facts. Yes. And if, if you miss that one, you know, <laughs> then, then, then life is going to be, you're going to be off the rest of your life. You got to know that you are made in the image of God. He made you like himself and he made you for a purpose, Bishop. Mm -hmm. he, he made you to glorify him. And, and when I say figure this thing out, it's got to register in your mind. Come on. I am like God. He made me. I, I'm in the God class. Come on, y'all. <laughs> I'm in the God class. And no, no other creature is in the God class, but he made me in the God class. And so exclusively. The, go ahead. Yeah, it's, there you go. I'm exclusively his. <laughs> Bishop, we talked about that Friday. About yeah. Exclusively his. He don't want to share us with nothing okay. or nobody. Okay. And, so, and so you got to figure this out that God made you for himself. Okay. To be, to, for you to glorify him. This is good. Yeah. Um, anybody else? Charlotte, you have something? I just wanted to go back to where y'all were talking about, you know, go to the church and bringing people and belonging in a, in a church body, you know, and, and having the proper, um, you know, corrections when things happen with children. I think sometimes we lose our kids when you have to have that confrontation or that correction. So I would like for one of y'all to, to kind of talk about, um, you know, like helping our youth out in correcting, you know, correcting them, um, meaning that they can tell us anything, but when you know that they continue to do it, they're continuing to act out and, and then they're belonging to us, what is the proper way um of bringing it to their attention and i know you know but i just want to hear from me i want to hear from you know y'all bishop <laughs> okay <laughs> bishop Randy, you to... yeah let, I, I will say this and i was i think i was speaking with bishop fox about this or my brother one of them about um uh, the, the the most important thing i believe you can help me out bishop if i'm wrong the most important thing in conversations in preaching Mm -hmm. Is that the people get an understanding? Yes, they, they they must because you're only accountable for what you understand. And, and, and so what happens is if you if you punish a child and that child didn't understand why, now he's going to build up resentment. You didn't even tell me why that you punishing me. And sometimes parents punish their children because they mad. You know, and, and, and now you're you're putting this wedge between you and your child. But look at this simple illustration. Your, your dad gets ready to go out the house and he says, I need you not to go down to Johnny's house. Do you understand me? And he's going to ask me that two or three times. Do you understand? I don't want you going down there. When I say I understand, that puts me in the realm of accountability. Mm -hmm. And then so when he goes away and I go down to Johnny's house, and he comes back early and finds me not ha home. Mm -hmm. When I come home, the first thing he's going to tell me is, didn't I tell you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and didn't you say you understood? Mm -hmm. So that puts me in line for discipline. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? And, and so when, 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 when we get to the point of understanding, and all that getting, get what? 
And I understand. I understand. I understand. I'd like to add this too, Bishop. Ahead, Bishop. To this is is just taking that same scenario to the next step because okay. this is where I see these younger people are now. Saying don't go down to Johnny's house, we got to go that next step, that extra oh, mile. Yeah. You don't need to be at Johnny's house because yes. At Johnny's house, there are things that go on, and sometimes we need to go in depth that are not, that's not what you need to experience. That's not yeah. what you need to be around. There's danger there, and I don't want you because I love you. Yes. I'm protecting you, and this is why I don't want you down at Johnny's house. OK, now I know that sometimes it puts us in predicaments and we feel like because sometimes we don't say some things that we need to say because we feel like we're being judgmental. Right. Uh, right. And, and 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 we may be exposing someone or whatever. Are you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. But this is where these conversations and things need to go on amongst adults. Because we have a responsibility. We say that it takes a village to raise a child. Right. But if Johnny's parents is my neighbors, then we need to be mature enough to talk to Johnny's parents and say, hey, you know, I understand, you know, such and such and such. I'm not trying to run your own household, you know, but I want you to know I'm going to tell my child that I don't want them down here because of some things that you uh, are, 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 that you are, have no problem doing. But and don't see the, the the danger behind it, and y'all know y'all understand what I'm saying. Every conversation, oh, yes. it is. Is. but but these kids need to know why. They need to know the danger. They need to know this is for your protection. This is to know that you may not, you won't surely die. You may not do it right now. You need to know that marijuana is a gateway drug. You need right. that taking a drink will lead you to popping bills. You need to understand that you being curious about this will can lead you to addictions. It can lead you to uncontrollable, vile affections. You know what I'm saying? Because they're being taught it's okay to experiment. Okay? Ben yes. Nett, not Nett got the teacher. I never intended to get addicted to nothing. Mm -hmm. and, and I think, Bishop, we, we miss out the, the fact that uh, environments are important. Yes. And oh, env yeah. the environments are important. The environment that you're in. And again, you're trying to protect your child. Now, y'all y'all like me. Y'all can remember I preached a message one time. What happened to the neighborhood? Okay. <laughs> what, what happened? To, because in our day, if you went down to a friend's house and you misbehaved, you didn't have to get home. Mm -hmm. It was on. It was on. It, it was on right in that neighbor's house. If you right. came down there, they was they was helping raise, and they could they could whoop up. They could discipline us. Absolutely. But now we don't even know our neighbors. You know, mm -hmm. because the day is different. You know, you, you know, they don't care what goes on in that house. And now you have to to, to really. And, 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 you know, it was so sad what happened to the team, the, the, the young people this weekend, yes. you know, uh, the murders. And and I think it goes back again to the home, the family. Yeah. And mm -hmm. and, and so uh, and so I, I'm, I'm very uh, uh, aware of the fact that you need god as the master of your life yeah, he's the master and he's the key let's go to this right here god tells us to love our neighbors we love ourselves have we gotten away because of the times that we're living in that we don't we don't have any relationship with one another god's a god of relationship he is, he is. community should still be community neighborhoods should still be neighborhoods that's us becoming selfish and getting away from the things of God. Amen. Amen. It's, the, it's the signs of the time, Bishop. But, yeah. but Paul tell us, don't be conformed to this age. Exactly. You, 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 yeah, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yeah, and, and a lot of people, I think I say the pandemic has paralyzed some and it has infested what we normal, you know, they're normalizing, you know, doing drugs. They're normalizing staying on video games, killing games, and not really understanding that the spirit is residing in them. And they take on the spirit and then they go out and try to experience with these things in the communities. And we're just saying they're just they're just being kids. No, they're not being kids. They're not being children when they yeah. take on another spirit. Yeah. And they don't realize that. 
do we do we realize what we're telling our children that it's okay they're just being children that are mocking what they're looking at on video games and YouTube. Yeah, and see, I think I think you're right on it, Sister Charlotte, because when when those games start coming out, that's when conversations stop happening, Bishop. See, you know? Yeah, and they they begin to be their babysitters. They begin to start yeah what they see, and we yeah. see all the time with the voices and the things that they make. You put a child in front of a TV or a YouTube video, and they can come back and mimic. The everything the, even to the voices so i know that this spirit you know um it's 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 just it's just forming up inside of them you can yeah. say that yeah well sister charlotte you know in our day we <laughs> we only had three channels <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't play after <laughs> yeah. i don't know if stephanie knows about that <laughs> <laughs> we are 27 and I don't know the other channel, but I know a little bit about it. No, it's Stephanie three Ooh. channels, ABC, NBC, CBS, and it went off at 11 o'clock or 11 30. And yeah. all you saw after that was a line. Okay. Yeah. White noise. Yeah. So so you now you got hundreds and hundreds of, of channels. Okay. They don't never go off. And you know, it, it has just hindered us from Bishop, as you so wonderfully say, uh, from conversation. Cause we don't conversate no more. We text. Mm -hmm. We on we on the phone all the time. We we're, we're texting instead of talking, and right. and we need to be talking. Yeah, amen. Well, listen, yeah. uh, Charlotte. Thank you for your passion, uh, Bishop Ramsey. Figuring life out. You seen her passion for young people. Yeah. just came all the way over in there. And yeah. these are conversations that we need to be had. You know, your child up on 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 those war games where they're killing each yes. other and all of that is making them insensitive to taking a real gun and firing it at another child because they've been playing these games all day, all night long. And listen at this: smoking weed and drinking and playing these murderous games. And I don't know the know the name of them, but they can play them with people from all over the world because yeah, of the yeah. internet. I know one is Fortnite. Fortnite, that's yeah. the one I'm thinking of. Mm -hmm. Fortnite, and it's it's conditioning these yes. young people yes. to yes. not think nothing about taking a person's life. Exactly. Wow! Like wow. as as though it's a game. Yes. As though yes. it's a game. Even we've seen this in mass shootings and things of that nature. We got to figure life out. Mm -hmm. We got to have some conversations. Oh and listen, my goodness! We got to put some some boundaries and some things in place. Uh, and 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 it's got to start, Charlotte, with the little people mm -hmm. that they don't come up conditioned uh, into these things that we've made society has made normal. Uh, okay, that's it's good. That's good. Us. It's affecting us. Amen. Amen. Listen, we, we only have about 12 minutes, guys. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> uh, I want to say in this in this chapter, Bishop was talking about um the keys. Okay, the key, uh the, the master key to figuring life out. One of the things he mentioned was living above feelings. Ooh. Living above feelings. Ooh. I won't touch it. Listen, we, we got we got all type of time. I'm not we can't do this all in one setting. But Bishop, if you'll come back, we'll talk about this some more. But we whenever you want me to. Whenever you want me to. Yeah. Living above feelings, Bishop. Can you talk about that portion there? It hit me like a like a lightning bolt. Well, you know, we, we are we are people of emotions and we are oh people. My. Who operate by feelings and one of the worst things you you hear about people you hurt my feelings yeah. <laughs> and so now now you got people in church who have hurt other people's feelings and now they're living in that feeling of hurt mm -hmm. anger depression but like you say bishop we won't talk about it mm -hmm. we'll, we'll walk around people we won't shake their hand uh all these things based on how i feel you know, and, and, and you got to be careful about living your life from how you feel. Uh, you got to live your life by faith, with which overrides feelings, because he tells us even to count it all joy. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so it, that's very that's very detrimental to your spiritual health. Uh, your soul is your in trouble. Soul is in trouble. Your soul is in trouble because our soul is our mind, our will and our emotions. 
Yes. And, and that's something that we got to talk about, too, when we talk about being saved. Your spirit got saved. Now we got to deal with your soul. Come on. Come on. Now we got to deal with your mind. We got to deal with your will. Come in alignment with the will of God. We got to deal with the, the unhealed hurts, the unresolved issues, the unmet needs that have affected your emotions in mm -hmm. your life and put up strongholds in your mind, all those types of things. And that's what the Holy Spirit is there to do. That's what grace is there to do. And we've got to, to, to learn how, because one of the things you say in the next paragraph that you're writing is trusting the process. Mm. We've got to learn how to embrace the process. Yes. The scripture tells us to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Mm -hmm. And we've got to talk about that. And we got to have those conversations when 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 we can address an event that has transpired in our life, that you can receive wise counsel yes. on how to, yes. to come to a place of healing and wholeness in that thing and not let that be there for 30 years, 10 years, 15, oh 20 years. Oh my. You're stuck. And you're, you're stuck. treating people out of the way that event made you feel. Yes. Okay. Bishop, let me let me tell you something. My, my wife, she she reminded me of something and we talk about it often and we don't talk about it in the church enough is the mental health of the church. Oh my. You know, the mental health of the church. And, and I'm, I'm dealing with it tonight on my Bible study. I'm dealing with how to be an overcomer. And so what happens is every attack of the enemy comes to your mind first. Mm -hmm. And you got a lot of people in church who have problems mentally. It don't mean you're crazy. Right. It just means that you haven't figured things out in your mind and it's affecting your life. Yeah. And uh, it's and, and even pastors mm -hmm. have problems with mental stability because we carry a lot of weight. And yeah. and, and if, again, if you can't if you can't unleash that weight and talk, I'm glad I have Bishop 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 Patterson because we talk we talk. we talk all the time. We talk a lot and we talk mm -hmm. for quite a while. It helps me. Mm -hmm. It helps me to deal with things that I can't talk with Sister Stephanie about. And I love you, Sister Stephanie. But I I, there, there's things I need to talk to him about because we're in that same mm -hmm. uh, field. And so mm -hmm. I don't think we talk about that enough, Bishop, the mental health of the church. Yeah, it, it has to be talked about. We got to look at the stability, the emotional yes. stability. Uh, listen, <laughs> you know, <laughs> church is a people, not a place. If I'm the head of my household and I'm not in a good mental state, then I could cause my whole household to not be in a good mental state. And then it makes the whole community not in a good mental state. And now our city's not in a good mental state. Wow, and wow. that is not the will of God. Wow. Wow. You got to figure it out, Bishop. <laughs> <laughs> we we, we got to figure this out. We got to figure this out. And we can't keep measuring ourselves by ourselves or to right. ourselves. Or I'm not as bad off as this person or that person and trying to judge another person or put someone else down to lift myself up. Mm -hmm. You know, we should be measuring ourselves against the word of God because that is is God and that's who we created in the image of and in his likeness. That that's true. I I think I write in the book too. I don't I can't remember what chapter, <laughs> is that oftentimes when kids wanna uh, talk about their room. You know, my room is clean. <laughs> they, 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 what they do is they may compare it to their sibling's room. Yeah. You know, yeah. Well, well, my room is cleaner than her room. But oh, then yeah. mama sets the standard for how <laughs> a room has got to be clean. And yeah. she takes her into her room and says, if your room ain't like this, then it ain't clean. Because this is the standard. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so I can't measure how good I am by how bad Sister Stephanie is. Right. I, I can only measure myself to God, you know, mm -hmm. and I got to press toward that mark, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that mark of perfection and holiness. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, somebody said, well, you can't be perfect, but you got to press toward it. That, yeah. That's 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 part of figuring life out, Bishop. And really that word perfect, we're afraid of. Yeah. When we study the word out, it talks about maturity. Yes. Being yes. mature, a mature person accepts responsibility. Yes, mom, my room isn't isn't clean. I got shoes everywhere. And all those types of things. A mature person is not going to to say, "Well, I, I, it's not as as dirty as my sister's room." That's immature, <laughs> you know. And when right. you're not accepting responsibility for the way that I think, the way that I feel, and the way that I behave, that's unrighteousness. 
Um, it is, Bishop. See, we got to talk about those things. You gotta, you gotta figure it out. God causes us to think properly, feel the right uh, uh process things properly, so we have come out with the right feelings, which should be love and, and patience and things of nature, and then also behave properly. And just this just this walk with God. I've teaching a whole series on learning to walk with God. We've Love learned it. church, Love we've learned Love conference it. things, we've learned church etiquette, liturgy, all of those types of things, but walking with God, which had to do with us as a person, me as a person, okay, that's gonna affect how I'm gonna treat Charlotte, how I'm gonna treat Stephanie, how I'm gonna treat Calvin. Listen, how I'm going to respond when life happens. Yes. That's what we got to deal with. And that's what we got. That's what we got to deal with, bitch. And and I will say this. I know we're getting close to closing. That you know you figure something out, Sister Stephanie, when you when you have what I call an aha moment. Mm. When, when when that light comes on, when that's it. Have y'all ever had that? I mean, I know you have. Yeah. You know? uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the, and the light comes on, and you say. That's it. That's what I've been missing. That mm -hmm. is the missing link. That's why I haven't been feeling happy. That's why mm -hmm. I've been feeling depressed. You gotta get, because if the light in you is darkness, Jesus said, how mm -hmm. great is that darkness? Wow. So it, that means you call right wrong, and how great is that wrongness? It could cost you eternity. Mm -hmm. So you want to get the aha moment. That's what figuring life is really all about. Yeah. And that comes by way of the word of God. John 1 tells us that the word became the light of men and the person of the Holy Spirit is the one that illuminates that word to you that you come to a place of understanding that yeah. will destroy yokes, lift heavy yeah. burdens and set anyone that's being held captive to their past, to their uh, wrong emotion or wrong thought process. It will destroy that yoke in your life. And you can begin experiencing life the way God intended. Oh, my, my. Hallelujah. Oh, my. Wow. wow. Listen, we have been talking about figuring life out with Bishop Ramsey. And uh, we want everyone uh, that will and can, please know you can get it uh, by cash apping him at Calvin Ramsey's on the screen and, and message him. Uh, your your mailing address to get this book out to you. I love for you to get it, and so next week or or if Bishop schedule allow, we'll have a part two to this, and we can try to get on through. Um, <laughs> if you get the book, you can go through it with us. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to that, Bishop. I was hoping I could. Okay, well we'll do that. We'll plan that for next week, and also. Uh, you can mail a check if you don't have cash app. We know everybody don't do those types of things. You right. can mail a check or money order to the address that's on the screen, and uh, he'll get the book out. I'll to get you. the book right to he'll you. He'll get it out to you. I guarantee you will, and it will be a blessing. It's something you can give to your teenager. Some you can give to to your your older children. Yes. Everybody, I don't care how young or how old they are. People are still trying to figure life. Out. That is so true, Bishop. Make sense of things. Come to a place of holiness. Come to a place of holiness. Sister Charlotte has something. I'm Come on, Charlotte. Sure. Yes, I want that book. <laughs> <laughs> I I went back and found um my book that I got from um Bishop Patterson. I knew I had purchased his book about life, but I want mm -hmm. you also. I'm looking forward to um reading and um getting those nuggets out. I'll make sure it's signed too, Sister Charlotte. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yes, I want it to be signed. Amen. Listen, that's our time. Wow, what a time. It, it just flies by, doesn't it? It does. It does. Mr. Ramsey, will you pray for us and get us out of here? And on next week, tell everybody, cousin them, auntie them, your neighbors, everybody, we're going to be on here talking about part two, figuring life out with Bishop Calvin right. next week, 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. And listen, also know that this right here will be playing on Kingdom Broadcasting Network 94.7 in Tupelo, Mississippi on next week. So anywhere in the world, kbnradio.net, you can listen to this same broadcast next week, 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. So you can send it to a cousin and a friend, somebody in the military. I don't care where they are in the world. They'll be able to listen what you heard on today. Amen. Yeah, I've had to, I've had to order it over and over. I've getting so many orders for this book because it's answering questions, Bishop. 
Praise God. Let's answer your question. Let, let, Come on, pray for us, Bishop. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, we certainly thank you uh, that you have allowed us to figure life out and that you have allowed us to understand that life is not life without you. And so I praise you, God, for giving us the aha moment, for opening our eyes to who you really are. Now, God, I pray for those listening, those who are struggling in life, young, old, middle aged. Father, I pray that you would help them to understand that you are the key, the master key to life, and that there is no life without you. You came to give us life and you came to give it to us more abundantly. We appreciate you. We love you. And we thank you. We know you're going to do it in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Don't forget everybody. Thank you, Sister Charlotte. Thank you, Stephanie Bishop. Thank, thank you. So much. Listen, share this. It's out on YouTube. Uh, even right now you can get it. Share with a family member, friend. I know I'm repeating that. But I'm telling you, this is how important and how effective I know that this, what, what was shared on today can help somebody's life. We'll see you next week, 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, Life Lessons Live with the crew, where we believe that conversations birth new seasons. God yes, bless sir. you next week. Yes, sir.